Well, hey guys, what's up? It is the end of the day. Really, really hot here in Texas. The UV index today was like 11. And I just got home and I'm burning up. I made myself a ice water with one of those watermelon agua fresa, no sugar added drink mixes from True Lime, True Limeade is it? That I showed my grocery haul last week. Very, very good, by the way. And of course, Bubba is keeping it cold and keeping me hydrated. But anyways, as you can tell from the title and the thumbnail of this video, today I'm going to be reviewing for you all one of my, actually my favorite uh, UK based, UK sunscreen of all of the sunscreens that I've tried from the UK. I frequently recommend it in the description box of, the, of my videos uh, for my UK viewers. Of all the sunscreens from Europe that I've tried, France, UK, you name it, this is far and away my favorite one as far as the way it feels and the protection it affords and many, many factors. Uh, many of you have uh, started using it uh, and also have chimed in in the comments that you really, really like it. So I'll talk all about it today, but it is the brand Altruist and they have an SPF 30 sunscreen as well as an SPF 50 sunscreen. Now the brainchild behind the Altruist sunscreens is actually a dermatologist, uh, a British dermatologist, who's motivated to create sunscreens that would not only offer the user the user's um, excellent protection against ultraviolet light, ultraviolet light being responsible for directly damaging DNA in our skin, causing skin cancer, suppressing the immune system in the skin, deeply penetrating the skin, damaging collagen, aging our skin, and contributing to many skin diseases. So not only should the sunscreen offer protection against ultraviolet light, but their motivation was to do it in a manner and in a vehicle that users were actually comfortable using. It was lightweight, easy to apply, easy to reapply, because that is that is really a key, a key to the success of sunscreen is in the reapplication. They all need to be reapplied no fragrance or irritating substances, and lightweight, non-greasy. These are all things people don't like about sunscreen. So they set out with that in mind and they really, really did a phenomenal job in creating sunscreen vehicles that I think everybody's gonna love. Um, and the filters that they have chosen and selected and put into their sunscreens offer really, really excellent ultraviolet light protection. So first of all, I'm gonna talk about the active ingredients in their sunscreens, and then I'll talk a little bit about the inactive ingredients. So they make a um, SPF 30 and an SPF 50 sunscreen, and they're pretty similar. The SPF 50 sunscreen is a little is a little bit heavier and a, a little bit uh, more moisturizing, and I'll just show you what they look like putting them on in a little bit but the filters that they use are filters that will protect against both UVB and UVA. Those are two um, categories of ultraviolet light that damage the skin. UVB is, uh, covers the wavelengths of 315 nanometers to 290 nanometers. That is really what, what hits the top of our skin and directly damages DNA. It's also what is largely responsible for burning our skin. UVA, however, is the part of ultraviolet light that penetrates our skin deeply, can contribute to hyperpigmentation, aging the skin, suppression of the immune system. And it covers the wavelengths of 315 nanometers to 400 nanometers. Now UVA, just to make it a little bit confusing, is subdivided into two types of UVA. There's UVA 1 and UVA 2. UVA 2 are shorter wavelengths of UVA that are right next to UVB and they penetrate, they still penetrate deep, deep into the skin. Um, UVA 1, however, um, are broader wavelengths of UVA that penetrate even more deeply and they cover the spectrum of wavelengths of 340 nanometers to 400 nanometers so quite deep and at the at the end of that the end of that towards the 400 towards the 400 wavelength we're starting to get closer into visible light all right so their sunscreens are formulated in a way to protect against UVB the skin cancer causing rays and UVA, those deeply penetrating rays. 
The filters that they have included that offer protection against UVB exclusively are one called ethyl hexyl salicylate, which is octyl, sal octyl salicylate, so you'll see that on there. In addition to octyl salicylate, they also have another filter uh, that goes by the trade name Ensulizole, <laughs> and it's chemical name, and I'm telling you this because that's what they list on the, on the product is, phenyl benzimidazole sulfonic acid. It's quite a mouthful, but this particular UVB filter is really, uh, really makes products a lot more lightweight than other other chemical sunscreen filters uh, that often have to be added and provides exclusively UVB protection. Then the third UVB uh, filter that they have in here is Uvenol T150 or ethyl hexyl triazone, uh, which is again, exclusively UVB. So those three filters only cover UVB. And so, it, so they need to add some filters and some ingredients that will protect you against UVA to call this a broad spectrum sunscreen. So which ones did they choose? Well, first up, they chose the, the chemical filter that we have in the United States, avabenzone. And avabenzone covers UVA, both UVA1 and UVA2. It is exclusively UVA, so it needs the UVB filters in there to protect you against skin cancer um, and DNA damage and a sunburn. But it does both UVA1 and UVA2. Um, avabenzone, however, is not fantastic in that it begins to degrade upon exposure to light Therefore, other filters are added to, to these sunscreens that are not approved in the United States, unfortunately, but these other filters also offer UVA protection and can stabilize the avabenzone a little bit, so they make avabenzone work for you a little bit better. One additional filter they've added is Tinosorb A2B. I've talked about Tinosorb S and Tinosorb M or Bimotrizinol, Biscotrizol in other videos, but Tinosorb A2B is a little bit different than those. It, um, its chemical name is, <laughs> I have to write these down, Tris Biphenyl Triazine. So this particular UV filter will cover not only UVB, but also UVA2. As a reminder, UVA2 are the shorter wavelengths of UVA, kind of somewhat closer to UVB, all right? So not as deeply penetrating as UVA1. So at this point, we have Tinosorb A2B getting us UVA, um, getting us UVB and UVA2, and we have avabenzone getting us UVA1 and UVA2. This product also contains nano, nanoparticle titanium dioxide. And nanoparticle titanium dioxide will not only cover UVB, um, but will also cover UVA1 and UVA2. Uh, UVA, UVA1 coverage from titanium dioxide in nanoparticle form is probably, a, is a, seems to be, at least from the lab studies, a lot less robust than UVA coverage from non-nano titanium dioxide. However, the nano-sized particles help to make the product more user-friendly because when the titanium dioxide is not nano-sized, it is really white and filmy and people do not want to use it. So um, in short, it's got some pretty decent UVA filters. I would have preferred it if they had put Tinosorb uh, uh, Bimotrizinol in it because Bimotrizinol, unlike Tinosorb A2B, will give you both UVA1 and UVA2 in addition to UVB. Uh, but these are, th these are great UVA filters and this, these particular sunscreens really, really give you a good broad spectrum. So the filters and the titanium dioxide in these sunscreens off afford wonderful broad spectrum ultraviolet light protection. And I like that they include a variety of different ones in, in the product. By doing so, they're able to use lower concentrations of each one and at lower concentrations, uh, each filter is less likely to be irritating or aggravating to the user and kind of kind of builds upon the the spectrum and, and what the product can offer as far as UV coverage just in terms of, of all of those different UV absorption maxima that are that you get from having multiple filters in in the product so I really like that about these sunscreens 
they are in phenomenal lightweight vehicles, um, which I really think you guys will like a lot. The vehicles are fragrance free, which you know I love because fragrance is a common cause of allergy, uh, particularly in sunscreen. Really, really should never be in sunscreens. There are no essential oils in this. There are no preservatives that are commonly associated with allergic contact dermatitis. They use things like silver, and um, they also use pyroctone olamine as a you know very gentle preservative. So really, really low irritation. And by using these, um, not only are they low irritancy, but I think a lot of times what gives sunscreens a funny smell to consumers, sometimes consumers just don't like the smell of sunscreens, a lot of times what does that it are the preservatives in the sunscreen so this, these sunscreens have no no odor to them whatsoever very lightweight uh, very very easy to tolerate low risk of irritation from the inactive ingredients and you know easy to put on easy to enjoy the one ingredient in this that I will alert you all can potentially be problematic is desyl glucose glucoside. Desyl glucoside is an alkyl glucoside. I've mentioned these recently in some of my videos to you all, but alkyl glucosides are becoming very common in skincare products and they are very, very gentle gentle surfactants that are added both to sunscreens and a lot of moisturizers and, and skincare products. And they were actually named the contact allergen of the year in 2017 because we're starting to see increased number of cases and incidences of allergic contact dermatitis to these. So that's going to be an ingredient in this that could potentially cause people some problems, uh, particularly if you have a pre-existing sensitivity to this. Uh, so just be aware of that. But it's, it's going to be hard for people to just go out and avoid that. Like I tell you, avoid fragrance. Many other things can cause and do cause allergic contact dermatitis, and you really can't avoid everything. Uh, fragrance just doesn't have a role in there, okay? The alkyl glucosides play a role. They're important in the product, and you know they, they, they do something in the product, whereas fragrance does nothing but, but smell good or take away smell. Um, so really not functional or useful in terms of skin health, whereas the alkyl glucosides are actually doing something. So that is the one ingredient in this that could potentially be problematic. Um, all right, let's talk about how they go on. They go on like a dream, very lightweight, not greasy, not shiny. The, thir the SPF 30 is um, a little bit more lightweight than the SPF 50. Um, you can see it comes out as a cream. And I will just put a little swatch here on my left cheek so you guys can see. Yeah, very lightweight. I mean, it goes on in just, you know, a really light swoop and really feels, just really feels nice. All right, and this is the SPF 50. Um, again, you know, not really too strikingly different, but it is, it is a little bit, um, it is a little bit thicker than the 30 and does leave a slightly higher, just a slightly higher shine to it. I don't know if you can appreciate that here. I mean, it's really, really a subtle, subtle uptick in the, in the uh, kind of moisture heaviness, moisturizer heaviness aspect of it. And if you look at the ingredients, I believe it's because they have a, the SPF 50 has a little bit more glycerin in it, which is just a moisturizer that is wonderful for the skin. So the 50 seems to be a little heavier, but both are super lightweight, non-greasy, not going to clog pores, not problematic for acne prone skin. I th While I don't have children, I think you may find success with putting these on your children. Uh, they're not sticky. Kids don't like sticky things on their skin. I, you know, I do know that <laughs> from experience. Uh, kids don't like sticky things or things that sting or burn or just feel feel gross. Children are are more uh, alert to to the tactile sensation of, sensations of things and and verbalize their their intolerances to them a lot more readily than, than adults sometimes will even. But I'm really confident in the vehicles of these sunscreens that you could give this to your to your child to your you know toddler child teach them how to put it on and teach them to love putting sunscreen on and these are these are very kid friendly all right for people with sensitive skin these sunscreens are a great choice as well for people with 
rosacea, I can never predict that 100% because rosacea is very, as far as the ingredients and, and products that bother somebody's rosacea, it's very, very individualized. And these are chemical sunscreens. Chemical sunscreens tend to be more problematic for rosacea sufferers as opposed to strictly mineral sunscreens. So, you know, I can't predict with any certainty how these will go for you, but the vehicles, okay, not the, not the sunscreen ingredients themselves, but the, the other stuff, the inactive stuff, very, very rosacea friendly. So not problematic in that. Great for eczema, prone skin, very moisturizing, very nice. All right, let's talk about some of the other, other non-skin non things about these sunscreens that I love. These sunscreens are super affordable, all right? You can get them, uh, for those of you in, in the UK, you can get them on Amazon UK, and they are so, so inexpensive. They even sell this phenomenal liter bottle, which I got, and I, I just love this. I mean, it is this is the equivalent of about 20 US dollars, I wanna say. Very, very, very affordable, super easy to use. So far is winning the Body Sunscreen Award because it is so user-friendly and so economical. Uh, I love the Japanese sunscreens two bits, but all of their products come in these tiny little bottles that, you know, unless you're a Barbie doll, they're not gonna last you that long, particularly on the body. Now, in addition to the creams, the SPF 30 and 50 creams, they also have an SPF 30 and 50 spray sunscreen. Spray sunscreens, as I've said, do not reliably distribute the sunscreen on your body. Um, and also, it seems when users spray the, the sunscreens on, a lot of the spray ends up going into the atmosphere rather than on your body. So they don't give a reliable, even layer to ensure adequate SPF and adequate coverage. But many people like using them. A useful way to use them is to put them actually, spray them on your hands and rub them in is one way to do it. So they do offer those, but do know that the spray formulations do not give you a reliable uh, amount of coverage. So my tip would be to at least spray them on your hands and rub them in rather than you know spraying them all out into the air. And they even say that on their website. They even come out and say that, like, we have the sprays, but do you, do you realize these limitations of the sprays? So they're very, very transparent, and I like that. The last thing I'll talk about in terms of the Altruist sunscreens is that they donate a portion of each sunscreen sale to a charity called Under the Same Sun. Under the Same Sun is a charity that supports children and adults living in Tanzania and other countries in Africa with albinism. Well, albinism, if you're not familiar, is an inherited or genetic condition um, in which individuals lack enough pigment, namely melanin pigment, in their skin, their hair, and their eyes. Therefore, they appear very, very white. They have very, very white skin, white hair, very, very light eyes. And albinism is actually more prevalent in Africa than in other continents, more prevalent in countries in Af Africa than in other countries in the world. And individuals with albinism suffer visual problems and problems with their vision. But in addition, because of the lack of pigment in their skin, they are at incredibly, incredibly high risk for developing dangerous, deadly, life-threatening, life-ending skin cancers. People with albinism in Tanzania, for example, are even more so at risk because they often are out in high ambient UV exposure with no coverage, no hats, no sunscreen, very, very uh, sparse clothing, no sun protection whatsoever. And they um, are incredibly high risk for deadly, deadly skin cancers. And unfortunately, due to ignorance, lack of awareness in many of these communities in which these individuals live, they are stigmatized, cast out from society, and unfortunately, they are brutally attacked and victimized by others in the community uh, who you know, view their condition as you know, perhaps uh, a mark of, of evil, and not only will many of these individuals lose their lives to invasive and deadly skin cancers, 
but as a result of societal ignorance, lack of awareness, in many of the communities in which these individuals live, they are heavily, heavily stigmatized and suffer brutal attacks, dehumanizing attacks, and are cast out um, from society. It is very, very tragic. And this uh, organization that I mentioned, um, Under the Same Sun, is a charity that supports outreach programs for education in these communities. It provides sun protective hats to these children and provides sunscreen to these children and adults uh, with albinism in these areas of the world. So a wonderful, wonderful charity and altruist uh, gives a portion of each sale of sunscreen, a portion of the proceeds go to this charity, which is wonderful. So I can't say enough good things about the altruist sunscreen. I really love them. I'm happy to hear in the comments that those of you who have tried them really like them. I haven't gotten a, a negative comment about an altruist sunscreen from any of you. I know they are heavily recommended uh, by dermatologists in Great Britain. And I, I strongly recommend them. This video, by the way, is not sponsored. Altris does not know I exist. Um, I merely love the sunscreen. And to me, it is, particularly this liter bottle, <laughs> is they're winning the body sunscreen. They're winning my heart as far as body sunscreen. Amazon UK is a trusted source for Altruist, so um, purchasing through Amazon UK is a reliable way to acquire them. You can also buy them, I believe, in several drugstores in Great Britain and um, perhaps, th and I believe throughout Europe as well, not just in Great Britain. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that was my understanding from their website. Very, very affordable. And then for US viewers, you can also buy this on Amazon for, you can get these two, two of these for, two of the SPF 30, 30 bottles uh, for, you know, it depends on the seller. Um, but uh, you, you also can get them on Amazon, on the American Amazon as well. So they're phenomenal. They're great, family friendly, easy to apply, low irritation, very, very good coverage, safe, affordable. I can't say enough good things about them. Oh, also no animal testing. So cruelty free for those of you who, who only select cruelty free sunscreens. Again, can't say enough good things about Altruist. So if you are using them, comment below, but I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.